Good morning again. Welcome everybody. This is my second social uh, that I've supported here with Kevin. Uh, I hope you all have a great time out here. I have a great time every day. Uh, I also blog and uh, Kevin posts those for me. And uh, it's one of the things, and you'll see it here, is uh, the blog that he's working on now is my reflection on uh, the fact that uh, I work at a historical place and I, I'm proud to do it. My background is flight research, aircraft flight control, uh, design analysis and test. Uh, and that's not the part of NASA you're going to see today. You're going to see the airborne science. But this room's kind of, I was looking at the pictures this morning. Uh, it's kind of memory lane for me. I was the chief engineer on that airplane. I chaired the flight readiness review for that airplane. Uh, I flew a flight research experiment on that airplane, taking the grip and stick out of the Swedish fighter and putting it in the back seat for pilot evaluations on how the, that airplane flew with that control stick. So this is the stuff I do and enjoy, but our mission here at Dryden is to advance technology and science through flight. And there is no doubt that the earth science and the airborne science absolutely does that. You go out and see Global Hawk, which is, uh, they'll tell you more about it. It's got the capability to fl flew HS3 recently, the hurricane surveillance mission. The ability to fly over the eye of a hurricane 22 times, which is a record for a single flight. To fly over a hurricane for 30 hours, which is phenomenal. They based out of Wallops, so they were able to track storms from the coast of Africa, an, an unprecedented capability. And uh, two years ago, they, when Hurricane Carl hit the Yucatan Peninsula, they were able to gather, it was the Global Rapid Intensification Process mission, which is trying to understand how hurricanes intensify, and they were able to track Hurricane Carl as it changed from a tropical storm to a Category 3 hurricane. Again, data which had never been collected in flight. So it's, it truly was advancing science through flight, which is what we're here to do. Uh, I think I'll stop there with introductory remarks and just see, does anybody have any questions for me? <laughs> well, there you go. fire away. <laughs> so, so are we online? Tell us, tell us your your, your fondest memory of all the projects. What was the most exciting, best moment? My fondest memory of a of test pilot, test flying, flight test. As actually, it preceded here. I was working in Northrop. I was the lead control designer for a, a cruise missile. When we dropped it off the pylon for the first flight, I was able to report at the outbrief that the missile did everything exactly as I'd expected it to do. Well, no, that is actually. Mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was very proud of that moment. Any more questions? Yes. Well, um, is, is it true that um, there's legislation in the work to change the name of the center? There was a. Um, Kevin McCarthy, who is our local congressman, uh, introduced a bill into the House of Representatives last year, H.R. 6612, which would have changed the name of the center from UL Dryden Flight Research Center to the Neil Armstrong, Neil A. Armstrong Flight Research Center, and then the, the corresponding test range, the Western Aeronautical Test Range, to the UL Dryden Test Range. Uh, the Senate did not pick up that legislation, so we have a new Congress now as of a week ago. And uh, we haven't had any indication yet as to whether Congressman McCarthy intends to reintroduce that legislation. But it, it needs to be passed by both houses. And signed by the president. And signed by the president. <laughs> it, went, it passed overwhelmingly in the House, so we'll see if it, it does. I, I, uh, I'm a Hugh L. Dryden fan. Uh, I like the Senate being named after him. Uh, I think Neil Armstrong is one of America's heroes. He's one of my heroes. I'm uh, fortunate enough to have met him and uh, talked to him about his experiences flying that airplane, the X-15. Uh, so it wouldn't hurt my feelings, but I, I, I don't have an opinion either way. I like both names. Um, it seems like a family uh, here. Uh, and when, when you come here, it's like Hotel California, you can never leave. It's, you know, it's one of the things I've, I've pondered that over the years. I've wanted to look into our, we don't really do an active recruiting <laughs> process. But we collect a phenomenal group of people. And I, I, I decided not to try and figure out how it works, because if you, if you did, you'd probably screw it up. And uh, no, we do. I think we do think of ourselves as a family here at Dryden. It's a, you know, we're a small center, a small organization, close-knit. And uh, I, again, I think 
what attracts everybody here is advancing technology and science through flight. And so, you know, we've got a, uh, we've got a mission and we know where we're going. More. You probably, it's the coolest thing is to go out and walk and look at airplanes. You guys are probably anxious to do that. Enjoy. I will, uh, as I run in and out of my Friday meeting schedule, I'll join you here and there. If you feel free to stop by, ask me questions. If you've got any really hard questions, ask Kevin. <laughs> Enjoy the day.